Alrighty then. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla. This is a fun tutorial because it's a tips and tricks tutorial for the wonderful world of Posca pins. Now this is for people, wonderful artists like yourself and myself who want to know a little bit more about Posca pins. Now, I bought these Posca pins and I had to try this myself. I, I was really interested in getting into acrylic paint markers and I thought oh man I love the finished looks of all these art pieces people are making with these beautiful wonderful paint markers as you can see here here are three different kinds of tips so you've got the really big bold one and there are even bigger ones and then we got the medium one and then the fine tip one these are the only three types of Posca pins that I have I don't have like the huge jumbo ones but these are the ones that I have, and these are the ones I have been working with as long as I have been working with Posca pins. I actually bought this wide range of Amazon Posca pins back on Amazon, and I bought a ton from Michaels, and I got these back at the beginning of 2020, so January 2020, before the world fell apart. <laughs> but yes, that's my that's the whole spiel. That's where I got my Posca pins because they were really hard to track down when they first came out. But I wanted to tell you a couple of tips and tricks that I've learned from the wonderful world of Posca. Now this is my moleskin sketchbook. I don't know how heavy this, you know, this paper is, but this is one of the big moleskin actual art sketchbooks. Now it has to say art sketchbook, can't be blank pages. It's an art sketchbook. And you see the Posca pins, you can see just a little bit of texture, but it really does look good. And here's another page for in my moleskin using Posca pins. And you see, it looks good. Paper comes up just a little bit, but this is almost like a Bristol paper. And this is actual Strathmore Bristol paper that I use it on. And you see, I did some Disney treats and they look great. They don't really tear up the paper too much and they, work pretty well. I also have watercolor paper that I use my Posca pins on and that's by Strathmore and it's a cold press. The only thing about watercolor paper and Bristol is that if the actual tip catches on the texture, yes, it will splatter. And see, this is my visual journal, Bristol Smooth. This is the paper I'm using for today's illustration. Because I'm on such a high kick for Animal Crossing New Horizons, I love this game and I love drawing characters. Right now, my favorite character is Daisy the dog. She's so cute! And I'm actually looking for Cookie right now, so if you play the game, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, let's start with a couple of things about my first tip. I'm gonna give you seven tips and tricks when it comes to Posca pins. So, tip number one. They're acrylic, so you can go over your mistakes. They're paint, they're acrylic paint. So if you've ever worked with acrylic paint before, then you know that once it dries, same for Posca pins, once it dries, you can go and back and just go over it or layer on top of layer. Same for any acrylic based medium. You know, it's a acrylic based marker, so you can go on top of it. If you make a mistake, grab that white paint Posca pen and go over it. It's magical. <laughs> now, if you've ever worked with paint markers in general, whether they're Sharpie paint markers or they're Posca pens or any kind of paint markers, you must know if you push down too much, you'll get a puddle and it'll, it'll be like a bleh all over the page. So <laughs> you have to be a little bit careful and when that happens the best advice I can give you is that if it's, it's just like paint it's like watercolor it's like gouache grab a little paper towel and blot it pick it up you'll be able to pick it up or sometimes I think oh all that waste of paint and I kind of go from place to place and I kind of distribute it and even it out so if you don't pick it up with paper towel and you leave that big puddle it will leave like a little cracked puddle you know it dries out and you get that cracked looking paint look to it that's what happens and you'll see an example on here another big thing is Posca pins really push your limits, creative limits, that is, when it comes to colors. You see, throughout this entire piece, I have not used the black Posca pin. I don't like to line my artwork with the black Posca pin. 
I like to use different darker colors or use complementary colors. You can see I've been using complementary colors like the fossil. The, if you play the game, you know the fossil is dark blue and instead of lining it with a dark a uh, blue or a black, you see that I did purple, pink, and white. So think of different ways to line your artwork. Let's talk about paper. So I'm using a smooth Bristol board paper. This is a visual journal and Posca pins really go well with the Bristol board. You need a thick kind of paper. I've used watercolor paper, I've used smooth Bristol board, and my moleskin sketchbook. The thing, the trick is with Posca pins, you don't want to use like flimsy paper. So if you've got like a sketchbook that's specifically for just sketching or for example like a Crayola sketchbook it might rip up the paper with your paint markers you're using a heavy medium on a thin piece of paper so it might not work out well so find a thicker kind of paper cardstock anything these pens were meant to mark on different awesome surfaces so they can handle like wood rocks uh, glass is a no-go. I saw glass doesn't work and I haven't used it personally on glass, but I saw that it was kind of like a bleh. <laughs> And then a huge thing is find different ways to shade and highlight. You can see with every single little object I have used, I have used complementary colors and I haven't, I've kind of tried to stay away from the white and I'm not using the black. That's what's great about Posca pens. They really have challenged me to find different colors to shade and highlight. And that's what I really like about this because I like the opaqueness of them and how beautiful and a flat color they look. So that's what I like about Posca pens. They challenge me to find different ways to highlight with colors and shade with different colors. And the best scheme for that is to stick to beautiful complementary colors. Or if the colors just look good, use them. Stick to a three color shading palette and use those for the whole entire image that you wanna use your Posca pens on. Okay, so there's one thing I really have to get across. If it doesn't have Posca pins, like it's not on the markers, then it's not Posca pin. Now I'm not dissing any other brand of acrylic paint based markers, but make sure you're very careful. If you wanna buy an alternative to Posca pens, then make sure you look at the ingredients. Make sure it's an acrylic paint based paint marker. You have to look for that, so look for that and you'll probably get something to practice with, but be very wary. I don't have anything against the Sharpie oil-based paint markers. I don't have anything against them. I'm just saying, just make sure you read the labels on the packages of the art supplies or markers you're about to buy. It will do you some good. <laughs> now you're probably wondering, Priscilla, why do I wanna buy these? The thing about Posca pens that I really loved now, when I went and bought them back in January 2020, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't watch any tutorials or any tips and tricks kind of videos before I grabbed them. I just came home with them, grabbed my sketchbooks, watched them out, and I thought, what can I make? Now, Pinterest, Pinterest is wonderful for inspiration, and I found a bunch of Posca pen illustrations on there. And I was looking through there, and I was just like, oh my goodness, this is all so beautiful, and I want to make beautiful, opaque, flat, gorgeous drawings and shading and everything. It's very, very awesome. And that's where I got a lot of my inspiration from. And I started off small. I started doing like 1950s illustrations of dresses from McCall's and uh, simplicity pattern designs and I used it for used it in them <laughs> I used them for shading and highlighting and that's what I like most about Posca pens now if you really want to focus on color and different ways to color and shade and highlight these are wonderful to work with I love them and plus if you just want to get into paint markers they're beautiful beautiful great investment and they last a long time i still have all of the posca pins that i bought from january 2020 so what it's been a year it's been probably exactly one year since i purchased so if you're an artist and you're looking for a brand new wonderful art supply to try i would suggest posca pins they're great to focus on color and finding different color schemes 
and they're just beautiful to work with. But yes, thank you for watching and I will see you all later. And I hope this helps, especially if it's just got some. <laughs> Bye!